Good morning. Would anyone who has served in the United States military please stand up so we can honor you this morning? Thank you for your service to our country. You may be seated. More than a century ago, World War I ended when an armistice, a truce, took effect at 11 a.m. on November 11th, 1918. Thus, the saying that the war ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Although it is not yet the 11th, we would like to take a moment of silence to remember. Typically, Veterans Day is to honor those who have served and are still living with us and here with us today. But we do also want to take a moment to honor those who have gave their lives serving our country and who are no longer with us with the song Taps. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you freely in this place. And we know one of those privileges and opportunities that we have to worship you in this beautiful space freely and publicly is because of those who have fought and continue to fight for those rights for us and those freedoms for us. We thank you. We thank you for those you've inspired to serve the country by serving and fighting for this country and its freedoms. Lord, we honor veterans today, not above you, O oh Lord, who have given your life for all of us in the whole world. But we thank you for everything. And we thank you for the blood, not just spilled on the battlefield, but also spilled at the cross of Calvary. We pray for this chapel service. We pray that it brings you honor and glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Would you all stand up with us to worship Jesus this morning? Come on, let's sing. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta well Come to wander, wait for the answer. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Isn't that true? Come on. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout until the door swing wide. Sometimes you've gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship. 
worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. Come on, let's sing that again. Praise, give him praise, give him praise. In the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise. In the highest, he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Faithful my life. Blessings day and night, countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, faithful all my life. Blessings day and night, countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. I'll praise you anywhere. you anywhere. Come on, let's give him some praise. Woo! Amen. Well, welcome everybody. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Um, I wanted to say a Bible verse for you this morning. It's from Psalm 100. It's a psalm for Thanksgiving. It says, shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with jubilation. Come before him with rejoicing Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord his, is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness is to all generations. It's important for us to remember that when we're struggling with things in our lives, when our lives aren't perfect, because they can't be, when we're having a tough time, God is still good. He is still there for us. And a lot of times he shuts doors so that he can open different ones for us. And we need to just thank him for what he does and just who he is. He's so good and awesome. He is joy. He is great. He is peaceful. So as we sing our next song this morning, I want to encourage you to just thank him for who he is. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of you. shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you, shout to the bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise. Oh 
God, we just come and we thank you. God, we thank you that you are the same God in the valleys as you are on the mountains. And we thank you that you're the same God in the in-between too. God, so we just praise you for who you are. And we thank you for the space that we get to come and worship you, Lord. And I just pray over this time as we recognize and remember those that have um, lost their lives fighting for our freedom. God, and we just um, thank you for their sacrifice. God, let this remind us that you lost your life for our freedom too. God, and we continually praise you for that. Lord, I pray that you would be with our speaker and that you would speak through them, that your Holy Spirit would just fill them. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Mackey family. This morning, we are celebrating our veterans, those who know firsthand a deep sense of service and duty. I have the honor of introducing our speaker for this Veterans Day Chapel. I've known him, and he's known me through uh, even my teenage years. So, Paul? Uh, Senator Paul Rosino is a 25-year Navy veteran who has served across the world. At his retirement, Paul led a team of nearly 200 military and civilian personnel as a Master Chief Petty Officer. After retiring from the Navy, Paul went on to open his own real estate company. His love for service and neighbors prompted him to run for U.S. Senate to serve as a representative for our community over this area. I'm proud to call him my representative. Paul is a decorated veteran, a proud MACU alum, Woohoo! and a man of faith, most importantly. I'm excited for you to hear from him this morning. Please help me welcome Senator Paul Rosino. Um, 
thank you, Ashley. That was a very nice introduction, and I appreciate it. Um, it's always special to come back to this place. Uh, I graduated uh, from uh, MacU in 2006, um, so many of you were probably either very small or weren't even born yet. Um, but it was a great place to come. Um, I did this all while I was on active duty. And so, um, President Greenwald, thank you for inviting me back. You know how um, special this place is to me. We talk frequently. Uh, and, and the leadership and the things that you're doing here matter so much to our state and, and to these kids and to the, the people here. Um, some of the stuff that I was going to talk about was mentioned already, but I do want to at least um, expound on, on some of the stuff that was mentioned, especially about um, Armistice Day. And so what I really want to talk about, the way Veterans Day started, and that was in 1921, an unknown American soldier was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. The site was on a hillside overlooking the Potomac River and the in the city of Washington, D.C. It became the focal point for reverence for America's veterans. But similar cere ceremonies were happening in France and in England for their unknown soldiers also. So as you, uh, as you heard this morning, the memorial gestures the place on November 11th, but because it was the 11th day of the 11th hour and when the exact time that World War I ended. Unfortunately, we know in, in what we're seeing now around the world that we're never safe. And um, after we've had a federal law made to call it Armistice Days, just a couple years later, World War II broke out. After World War II, we started to have natural, na National Veterans Day, which included a parade and festivities to honor all veterans. And the same day was designed as November 11th. In 1954, Congress passed a bill that President Eisenhower signed proclaiming November 11th as Veterans Day. So today we honor all those people that served our country. And I want to just talk a little bit about why I joined the Navy when I was 17. Many of you probably can understand this. You're a teenager. I lived in a family. We had eight children. My mom and dad didn't have a lot of money. And so um, there was no money for me to go to college. There was no, no possible way for me to, to do some things. So I decided at 17 that I was going to join the Navy. Uh, my mom and dad had to sign me in. And um, I remember going through my high school senior year in the delayed entry program. And then five days after, after I graduated high school, I was on my first airplane ride to Great Lakes, Illinois, in Chicago. Um, it was an intense experience. It was fun. And I learned so much about teamwork and ability and how, how you have to work with others of all cultures, all backgrounds, all different phases um, in life. And so then I, I started to work um, in aviation, and I started to work on F-14s, um, and I was stationed on the USS Nimitz. And, and it was a very tough time. At that time, uh, we were having problems with Libya, and um, the, I was out at sea when uh, Muammar Gaddafi was threatening to shoot down our airplanes and to make the Gulf of Sidra the Red Sea of Blood with Nimitz sailors. So we were always constantly on alert. We were on vigil. And one of the things that got me through was the base, the, the ship chapel, and where I could go and we could talk. And many of us who were young, I was 18 years old, 19 years old, we were scared and we were afraid. But we also knew that we signed, we took an oath, we raised our hand to protect this country and the freedoms and liberties that we have. And so one of the things that got me through was God. God helped us through visiting with other sailors that believed in God, and we talked about Jesus and how the, the trials and tribulations he had to go through, and we were able to make it through that time. My mom didn't like it very much because there was no cell phones and there was no email, and so everything was snail mail. So I would get letters from her six or seven weeks after everything had happened. So it was kind of when I, would, when I got back, my mom and I had lots of fun talking about that, about how safe I was, even though I was really scared. I wouldn't tell her that, though. Never would tell her that. So... Um, and then I f uh, moved on, and I decided that, hey, you know what, I think I want to fly in airplanes, not just fix them. And so I, I became a real operator, and I got stationed at um, Naval Air Station Barbers Point in Hawaii. And um, that airplane was a, a beautiful 707 that we were part of the nuclear triad. And so that mission that we had, we never, ever want to execute. It is a mission where we tell the world, if you do something to America, we will retaliate. And so we were more of a deterrent, but the airplane itself and the mission is critical. And then I went and said, hey, you know what, now I think I want to do something else. 
And I went back to Great Lakes and I became a recruit company commander and I pushed recruits. And from there I learned really leadership. I learned about how to make people from every part of this country where there were recruits that came in, where some had some of my recruits never saw another person of another entity or another religion. And you have to mold them together. Some barely spoke English, some were Hispanic, some were Asian. We had all kinds of people. And I learned that I had to mold those sailors, much like you get here when you guys meet new people and you're continuing to find what makes you common and that we're all human beings. And so I did that for three years, had a wonderful time, watched as sailors grew and they, they got to do better. And then I came, uh, I was state told, okay, well, you're gonna go to Oklahoma. The first time, I'm a Long Island kid, the first thing I thought about is, what is there to do in Oklahoma? There is nothing there. I was waiting for covered wagons and tumbleweed when I landed, uh, when we got here. And then something very, very magical happened. We got stationed here. My kids were young. They started school here. And we met some of the finest people you will ever meet in this world right here in the state of Oklahoma. And I remember when I was running for office, um, there was seven other Republicans running with me at the time. And I was at a Chamber of Commerce event, and they were trying to tag me as a person from not Oklahoma, uh, from New York, and that what common good would they have electing me as their state senator. And I let them all speak and I let them finish. And then something hit me while, that, while I was sitting there waiting for my opportunity to speak. And I got up and I said, you know, they're all, they're all right. I'm not from Oklahoma, but I got here. I love the people. I loved serving my country here. My kids went to school here. I started a business here. And let me tell you the one thing they don't have. I could have went anywhere I wanted to, including the Navy sending me back for free to my, to my home state. I chose to stay in Oklahoma. I chose to stay because of the people and because of the kindness and the love that's offered in this state. And so I will just tell you, let somebody mentioned it earlier that um, let God open doors for you because sometimes the door that you don't expect to be open, if you don't walk through it, there's an opportunity that you may miss. So always be open to opportunities that you've been given. Um, I, there was, somebody mentioned also veterans, because uh, that's why we're here today. So um, I know that you already were told to, or asked to stand. I would like you to stand one more time, because if you put on a uniform, please, if you are a veteran, would you please stand one more time? And I want to say a couple of words to all of you. You put on a uniform, whether it was for a month, whether it was for a year, whether it was for 25 years on my friend Bill, who served for 30. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts, because let me say this, many of you may not know, less than 1%, less than 1% of Americans served their country. Less than 1%. So this is part of that 1%. So let's give them a hand again. Thank you all. Thank you for serving our country. <clears throat> There's a few statistics I'll share with you if you're, if you're not familiar with Oklahoma. So many of you I know aren't from here, but Oklahoma's got a very, very rich military background and we have veterans um, right now. We are number one in the country per capita, per capita in population of veterans of over 300,000 that have served our country now living, working and serving still in Oklahoma. We have five military installations. Uh, we're home to Tinker Air Force Base, Altus Air Force Base, Vance Air Force Base, Fort Sill, and the McAllister uh, Army Ammunitions Plant. That makes the Department of Defense the largest employer in the state of Oklahoma at over 56,000 people working for, for our military bases, just for the bases. That's not people working as contractors and anything else. And many of you may have parents that are working at these bases. So thank you because they're supporting our warfighters here in the state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma continues to invest too in our veterans because we know how popular and how many have served. And when you serve, one of the things that we should always expect is we want people to give back to those who serve, whether it's in the ministry, whether it's in service, other, other parts of service, but people giving back um, when they're in need, we need to give back to them. And so we've done that here in Oklahoma. Uh, one of the things we did just recently, and um, it's 
it's it's a fact, so I, I don't mind talking about it, but just up the road here, about a mile or two away, two weeks ago, we dedicated what we call the Stephen A. Cohen Veterans Network. And that Veterans Network is designed to help vet nine, post 9-11 veterans who may be suffering from mental illness. We all know how uh, mental illness is affecting people in our country every day, from anxiety to depression to PTSD to all kinds of issues. It is the first model in the country, and it was started um, by Stephen A. Cohen because his son served, came back, and said, Dad, if you want to do anything to help philanthropically, we need to help our veterans, but not just them, their spouses, their parents, and their children. It is the first model in the country that is doing that. So if you, any of you know a veteran that's struggling, you may be the, the son or daughter of a veteran, um, family member, Stephen A. Cohen's network will take everyone, whether you can afford to go there or not. It's an incredible, incredible thing to do, and we've invested as a state to give back to our veterans who are in need. The other thing we just started. <laughs> We, we've done so many other things, but the one, one of the other ones I want to highlight for you as in, in 2022, we created the Oklahoma National Guard Education Assistance Program. The legislature, us, uh, we appropriated $9 million to the state regions for higher education. The, co the program will cover fees for guard members up to 18 semester hours at any institution of higher education in the state of Oklahoma. So if you're interested in service, uh, this may be an option to help you with tuition. Uh, just go find your National Guard recruiter and say, I want to join and, and get some tuition assistance and still serve your country and your state. So that was another thing we did. Uh, there's so much more, so many more things that we have done, um, but I, I could stay up here for hours and don't want to do that. We're really, one of the things that I really wanted to touch on was what is Mid-America Christian University doing? And I will tell you, I was going to college um, and I had gone to St. Leo's College. I had gone to Chaminade. I had done some online courses. I just could never get there. It just seemed like every time I tried to get, get forward, uh, there would be another requirement or I'd have to do another class or I'd have to do something else. And so I, I was at a uh, college fair at the base and Mid-America Christian University was there. And I sat with them and I talked to them and I told them my frustration and the recruiter said, hey, can you just come to our campus and let me sit down with you and let me explain to you what we do. It changed my life. Changed my life because I was getting ready to retire from the Navy and I need, knew I needed my degree. And so Mid-America Christian University, they have led the way, in my opinion, in helping veterans, especially here in Oklahoma City. And so there's a few, few things I'd like to tell you about um, Mid-America. For one, uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but um, if you are not using active duty tuition assistance um, and you have prior military service, as a veteran, you receive 15% off your tuition discount. That's a phenomenal thing, so thank you, Mid-America, for doing that for our veterans. Online, camp, on, online and campus and combination degree programs are all eligible for VA benefits. And I will tell you, trying to get VA accreditation is, is, can be difficult. So. For that to be a, an opportunity for um, veterans is a great thing. Mid-America Christian University currently employs 12 veterans and active duty members. So they hire veterans, they are taking care of veterans, and that means the world to me. Mid-America Christian University, this is the one that really is interesting. Mid-America Christian University has received the Military Friendly Award since 2014. That is an incredible accomplishment and shows the commitment to our military, our veteran families, it's an honor to be a graduate of this university and watch as they continue to support those who have served and continue to serve. So Mr. President, thank you for that. You guys should give yourselves a hand. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. <clears throat> so I, I, I know that um, I know that many of you are getting ready to go and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time up here, but I do want to do one thing first is the band, the student band. They deserve a really round of applause. How did they get that started? Great job, great job. Um, but there is there is one thing that I would love to talk to, to talk to you about just a little bit. And um, sometimes we um, veterans themselves, they were very proud to serve their country. But um, we have a history um, which we need to talk about sometimes, where veterans were not treated very well. 
especially in the 1960s and 70s, which now these Vietnam veterans is who I'm talking about. They're now in their 70s, pushing 70s and 80s. And they were treated horribly by many people in this country. And what people forget, especially those who, who didn't serve, many of them didn't volunteer to serve. They were drafted by this country to serve and to go fight. And so I would ask you this. When you see someone, uh, a veteran wearing a hat, or you see them have their pins, it's easy just to walk up to them and say, thank you. Thank you for your service to our country. Thank you for letting me have the liberties that I have, the freedoms that I have. If they're in a coffee shop, spend a dollar or two and buy them a cup of coffee. You will change their day, and it will change your day. I promise if you do, do things like that. If you see an elderly veteran in the store that's in a wheelchair, is not moving very well, has a cane, walk up to them and ask them if they could use assistance. They may say no, they're prideful people, but you'd be surprised, maybe they'll say yes. So that's another way for you to serve and continue to serve um, our veterans and our families. I just wanna say again, thank you for having me this morning. Thank you for letting me speak to you just for a few minutes uh, about Veterans Day. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And Ashley told me that I am supposed to dismiss you. So at this point, uh, I think this is over and you all dismissed. Thank you.